Hi, welcome back to Our Little Camper Adventures. I'm Suzanne. In this video, I'm going to show you 14 easy steps to convert your GoPower PWM solar charger to the Victron MPPT solar charger. Stay tuned. Welcome to Our Little Camper Adventures, where we put a lot of fun into a small space and have the time of our lives. So the reason why we're going from the GoPower solar charger to the Victron MPPT is that the Victron MPPT or the MPPT in general can give you 20 to 30 percent more power going from the controller to the batteries. There's a lot of information online. I'm not going to explain it, but you can look up stuff on Google as well as YouTube. Disclaimer, I am not an electrician or a wiring expert. I have some experience wiring things in our house in the camper. Obviously, when you're connecting wires together, this is electrician 101, but you're going to connect your positive or the red wire to the positive red wire and the black negative wire to the black negative wires. In some cases, especially with our solar uh, wiring coming down, our uh, negative is actually the white. I added a solar disconnect switch and the reason why is that in the winter time we don't camp and we live in the northeast and it can get pretty cold and below 32 degrees. The lithium batteries that we have don't like to be charged when it's below 32 degrees. So I can use that switch to just turn off any power coming from the solar panels to the battery. Also, the reason why we have the solar disconnect switch is that if you want to do any work on the camper, uh, you don't want to have any power coming in from the solar wires and doing the disconnect switch will shut that off. With this installation, I did not cut any existing wires. I just added that extra 10 gauge wire coming down from the back of the solar charger down to where I want to install the disconnect switch. I even used the existing holes where the GoPower solar charger was, so I don't need to do any drilling or additional drilling into the camper wall. All of the items I purchased for this installation, I purchased through Amazon. You'll see the description below with the list of items that I purchased. Wire cutter, wire stripper, ferrules and ferrule crimper, drill and drill bits, screws to mount the disconnect box in Victron Solar Controller, sandpaper and file, Victron MPPT 100-30, Victron MPPT control screen, Victron VE Direct cable, 16.4 feet with right angle connector, Dehul solar disconnect switch, 10 gauge marine grade wire, Wago two conductor lever nuts for 10 gauge wire. I used two. ABS 1 8 inch plastic, 6 by 12 inch, electrical tape, zip ties, Reflectix to finish off the wiring in the refrigerator vent area, and Reflectix tape to hold in place. Step 1, loosen caulk around Go Power controller. If you can't do this, then you're not going to be able to proceed on with the next steps. With our particular camper, our Go Power solar controller, is located on a wall and on the other side of the wall is the outside vent for the refrigerator. So I'm assuming they put a bunch of caulk around the GoPower solar controller just to keep rain and moisture out. Step two, turn off the main power to the camper and disconnect any incoming solar panel power. I disconnected the panel connectors on the roof going into the solar panel port on the roof as well as disconnected the wires to the batteries. Since our solar panels are on the roof, that connection goes to the port, and then there's a 10 gauge wire in our camper that comes down to the solar charger, the Go Power one. Unfortunately, that's the length of the wire, so I needed to add another 10 gauge wire, connect it to the existing wire that is connected to the back of the Go Power solar charger, and I ran that 10 gauge wire down to the area where I wanted to install the solar disconnect switch and the Victron MPPT controller. Step three, run 10 gauge wire or eight gauge wire if you have a newer camper from the right side of the fridge lower vent wire bundle to the converter area under the driver's side twin bed. I had to open up the storage area under the refrigerator to pull the wire through because it bunched up. While you're 
in the area of the wire bundles, you can run the Victron VE Connect wire down the wire bundle if you're going to be using the Victron screen. Step 4, install the solar disconnect switch box to the area under the driver's side twin bed. I kept the cover off so I can get all the wires in first. For this particular disconnect switch box, I needed to drill holes for the mounting. Don't forget to clip in the circuit breaker into the solar disconnect circuit breaker box. Step 5. Install the Victron solar controller under the driver's side twin bed. I put ours underneath the solar disconnect switch and just used whatever screws I had laying around the house for both the disconnect switch as well as the Victron solar controller. Step 6. Remove the wires from the back of the GoPower solar controller, red and white solar power wires, and the red and black battery wires. Step 7. Connect the upper end of your red and black 10 gauge wire, or 8 gauge if you're using it, to the red and white solar wires coming down from the roof in the fridge vent area. I use the lever nuts to connect the two wires. The lever nut that I used is for 10 gauge wire. So I would highly recommend using ferrules on the end of your 10 gauge and 8 gauge battery wire. What happens if you don't is when you connect those wires into the port for the Victron as well as your uh, solar disconnect switch uh, circuit breaker is that when you clamp it down or close it, those wires kind of get spread out and they really don't sit very well inside of the disconnect switch area as well as your Victron solar charger. So having the ferrules uh, makes a really good connection. I would recommend watching some YouTube videos on how to do it. It really was not that very hard. Step 8. Connect the lower end of your solar extension wire to the solar disconnect breaker and connect about 1 to 2 feet of additional 10 gauge solar wire to the opposite end of the breaker, red to red and black to black. When you finish inserting the wires for the solar disconnect switch, you can put the cover on as well. Step 9. Pull the red and black battery wires down from the wire bundle up in the fridge vent area under the driver's side twin bed. You may need to pull the wires from behind the storage area under the fridge. Step 10. Connect the red and black battery wires to the Victron controller. Per Victron instructions, you power up the Victron first before installing the solar wires. Step 11, connect the solar power wires to the Victron controller and turn the disconnect switch in the off position. Don't forget to connect the Victron VE direct cable from the MPPT screen to the Victron controller. Step 12, reconnect the wires to the battery and reconnect the solar panels to the solar port. Keep the main battery disconnect switch in the off position still. Step 13, install a cover over the GoPower hole using the existing GoPower controller holes already in the wall. I used a piece of ABS 1 8 inch plastic and attached the MPPT screen to that plastic. I made two versions. The first piece of plastic, I put the MPPT control screen in the center next to the new USB plugs. I kept this in place until I was able to complete our battery box project. With the second piece of plastic, I cut two holes, one for the MPPT control screen and the other for the Victron shunt screen. With this version, I will need to cut into the original GoPower hole in the wall to accommodate for the extra screen. I plan to keep the second version on the original GoPower wall. plan to do that soon. You can watch how I installed new USB plugs on our latest video. See the link in the description. Stay tuned on our channel for how I upgrade our battery box to a more robust toolbox housing, added battery warmers, and added a Victron shunt along with the Victron screen that goes on the second piece of plastic. I first figured out where I would like the new plastic cover to be on the wall, making sure the large hole is covered and the screws holding the original controller can be used. I used painter's tape on the back side of the plastic so I can draw out the template for all the holes. I aligned the original GoPower controller on the tape and drew hole marks for these screw holes. I used a drill with drill bits to drill holes for mounting the plastic. 
for the USB plugs and wire holes for the USB plugs. Along with the holes for the USB plugs, I used a hole saw bit to cut a two inch diameter hole for the Victron screen, or if you're installing the second screen for the shunt, then drill a second hole. I used a file to smooth out the edges of the screen hole or holes and sandpaper to round out the sharp four corners of the plastic. I then drilled smaller holes for the control screen outer cover. I connected the wires for the USB plugs and VE direct cable to the MPPT control screen and later we'll connect the shunt screen wires together as well. I zip tied the wires out of the way by zip tying them to the wire bundle in the bottom refrigerator vent area. I also then covered the back of the wall with Reflectix and secured with Reflectix tape. Step 14, turn on the main power to the camper. Congratulations on installing the Victron MPPT controller and solar disconnect switch. This is a rendition of our installation showing the wiring from our solar panels to the 10 gauge wire extension to the solar power disconnect switch to the Victron MPPT solar controller. The 14 steps for this installation are in the description below. Thank you for watching our little camper adventures. Don't forget to click the thumbs up button if you liked the video. Please subscribe to our channel and share with others. Leave a comment so we can get to know you better. Thanks again.